Welcome back. Today we're going to train a simple neural network using iFlow. And in particular, we're going to model the sine function using a fully connected neural network. I'll use TensorFlow for this demonstration, but the code works exactly the same with PyTorch and JAX as well. Now first, we need to create the neural network. And PyFlow has a nice function built in for this um, called DenseNet, where we can just specify how many inputs and outputs we want and the hidden layers. And I'm going to use two hidden layers with 32 neurons each. Since we're using TensorFlow, this will be a Keras model. And the parameter count of this model is around a thousand now. We're also going to need an optimizer. Let's choose Adam here um, with default learning rate of 10 to the minus three. And this is also going to be a Keras optimizer. Before we train the neural network, let's look at what it's currently doing. And to do this, I'm going to use a template grid to sample a bunch of points by passing in a function here. Let's use 100 sample points and distribute them between minus two and two. Now, one thing to note here is that X will be a five flow tensor, but the network requires a TensorFlow tensor with a very specific dimension layout. This is actually different from PyTorch in general, but we can use the native call function, which will automatically reshape X to the format that is required. We can also plot this, of course, and see that this doesn't look anything like the sine function. But just for reference, let's also plot the sine function. We can do this by adding an additional channel dimension to our grid, um, stacking our prediction and our ground truth. So let's do that. We're going to stack. I'm going to use a dictionary. This is our prediction. And then we have n of x as well. And here we want to get rid of the vector dimension by slicing it off. I'm going to call the new dimension curves. And this will result in this new plot where we can see the prediction and the ground truth. OK, to train the network, we need a loss function that takes in some data, which I'm going to call x, and then runs the neural network. And to do that, I'll just use the same line off. And then we need to compute a loss. So let's use L2, comparing our prediction with sine of x. We can also, of course, evaluate this function on some random values, for example. So let's create a batch of 100 examples. And then we see the initial loss, we get 100 values with a mean of around 0.2, standard deviation, and it also prints the minimum and maximum value that we get. Now we can update the weights of our network, given the optimizer, the loss function, and we need some arguments for our loss function. I'm just going to sample some new random values here. And note that this update weights function returns the same values as our loss function. So we could also return multiple things here, like so, and then the update weights will also return all of these. Now all that's left to do is to run this in a loop. We know that this returns our loss, and now two additional things. And we can also periodically print the loss. And this should go down over time, and indeed it does. If we want to run this a whole bunch of times, it's advantageous to compile our loss function. We can do this using the JIT compile decorator. So the first time this function is called, it will now compile it into a better representation. And then all future calls will use this compiled version of the function, which runs faster than the Python version. So we see that our loss now goes down, and we can also plot 
or comparison again to see that now in this range it has a pretty good prediction of the sine function. That's how you train a neural network in Fiveflow using on-the-fly data generation. In future videos, we'll also look into how to read and write data from disk, and we'll also train networks that operate on grids of data instead of just single values.